Welcome to Killer Women with your host, best-selling author, Danielle Girard. The Killer Women Vodcast is pleased to be a part of the Authors on the Air Global Radio Network. To learn more about Danielle and her books, visit her at www.daniellegerard.com and to access all of our vodcasts, go to youtube.com forward slash authors on the air. And now, Danielle's next killer woman. Hello, and welcome to Killer Women. I am your host, Danielle Gerard, and my guest today is Audra McElyay. Audra loves to write suspenseful stories that read like a modern day Alfred Hitchcock film. She's a former corporate buyer, magazine writer, University of Tennessee head majorette, and personal trainer who has always loved to tell a story. Whether it be through the movies she wrote and made her friends act out growing up, the secret songs she wrote and never showed a soul, or through the choreography she wrote for numerous dance and baton twirling teams. Audra has a bachelor's degree from the University of Tennessee in consumer services management. She currently lives in Tennessee with her husband, two boys, and their dog and cat. In her spare time, she enjoys reading, exercising, and listening to Taylor Swift songs over and over. Audra is a proud member of the Women's Fiction Writers Association, International Thriller Writers, and the Ink Tank. Her work has appeared in a national online publication, including She Knows Magazine. One Little Word, which was released February 22nd, just a few days ago, is her first novel. So first reviews of One Little Word call it compelling, packed with sharp turns and unexpected twisted, and I'd have to agree. I'm not easily surprised by a twist, but I can honestly say I did not see that one coming. So Audra, welcome and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Of course. So before we dig into all the fun stuff about where this idea came from and your writing and how you got started, um, can you give our readers, our, our readers, our listeners, our watchers, um, a, a little summary about one little word? Well, it's set in Knoxville, Tennessee, and it's about a famous suspense author who is a native Knoxvillian who everybody just kind of adores kind of like we all adore Peyton Manning and Dolly Parton here. So it's a very famous author and she is killed. And there's rumors that it could be, you know, foul play, maybe she was murdered, but nobody knows for sure. And there's an investigation going on. So our main character is Madeline and she is a reporter slash journalist who has a Me Too moment at the very beginning of the book. And then she goes out on her own because she doesn't wanna work for her boss anymore at the news station downtown. And she's trying to figure out this story because the police aren't taking it seriously. And so she's trying to figure out the story and she's out on her own and she gets tips from a source who seems to know a bit about what happened and they're kind of leading her through this investigation and that's probably about all I can say we don't really know if a source is good or bad and things get crazy <laughs> they do indeed get crazy so um before we talk a little bit more about um one little word which for sure um was a twisty Hitchcockian story mm -hmm. that, I, that I really enjoyed um I would I think it's since this is your first book and you're obviously a young author, um, many of our listeners, I think, are aspiring authors themselves. So can you tell us a little bit about the process? Is, was this the first book you've ever written? Did you Are there books buried in the yard, backyard, which is what I always say about my first books? Um, and um, can you give us a little bit about that information and what it was like to find um, an agent and publisher? Because I think that's really helpful for people who are, who are trying yeah. to do what you've done. Right. Well, I started my writing journey about 10 years ago, so it was definitely not a quick one. And this is not my first book. This is my first book to be published, but I have one buried in the backyard. I say stuffed in a drawer and locked up forever. Yeah. Um, but that's the one I, I wrote first and really learned all the do's and don'ts, what to do, what not to do, all of that. And, you know, I started that in 2012 when I was in between jobs and we had moved around a lot for my husband's job. And then I didn't finish it until 2016. I wrote about half of it in 2012. And then I finished the other half in 2016 when I was on bed rest with my second child. Mm -hmm. And then I queried and all that. And I feel like at that time, things were a little bit different in the querying world. 
Um, I feel like it's very rare now to get feedback from agents. You usually just get a line or two, if, if even that. But I was very fortunate to get some really good feedback. And I even had one who said, you know, I think you have potential. This reads like a first book and encouraged me to move on or, you know, you know, really work on it a lot more, but I had already worked on it for years at that point. So right. um, moving on from the first book was probably the biggest challenge because you're so married to it. You've mm-hmm. devoted so much time and energy into it. I feel like I had to kind of go to school um, for years to be a writer because there is no school that, that I had. I didn't go to to college and major in English or journalism or anything having to do remotely to writing. So I kind of had to self-teach and luckily I found um, Women's Fiction Writers Association. I got plugged in with some great mentors who, you know, really helped me out, who really didn't have to help me out and um, kind of coached me through through some things and eventually I moved on wrote one little word and that's a, you know a little bit of a different story <laughs> if you want me right. to go there I don't know if you want me to go there yet but the writing of one little word was really a strange a strange story <laughs> well t- I mean as as much as you can because we know that there's um there is a really big twist we don't want to give away but yeah give us a right. tell us about that I mean I think one thing it's that you mentioned that I think is important um, for aspiring writers is that you do kind of have to give off, give, uh, walk away from a first book. Oftentimes, I think, mm-hmm. I think it's, it's maybe rare to publish your very first ever novel, unless you've lit, right. like you said, sort of shredded it and rewritten it. So, so, so tell us about, you know, what it was like after you sort of, you know, were sad and moved away from the first book you'd ever written and sort of dug into um one little word what was that experience like well the the process of getting to the point of being ready to move on was the hardest part like I said but this book I've written four books all in all but this one was just crazy because I dreamed the whole thing as a movie and it totally played out from beginning to end the plot wow. was just there it was starring Johnny Depp and I switched him to a female and filled in the blanks and subplots. And then that was, wow. that I, wrote I wrote it in a month because I couldn't oh wait to get it out. <laughs> wow. Well, that is, that is amazing. And, and I would say rare from my experience. And then how, mm-hmm. from, I'm actually, it may, just made me realize I haven't shown the beautiful cover of this yet. So I wanted to show everybody what One Little World looks like. And mm-hmm. there is your Johnny Depp stand-in. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've got well, one here. Madeline, oh, it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, and then from there, how, what was the, re- I mean, I what was the revision process like? Was there, you know, or or did you create it in a month and it was ready to go no don't tell us that because no no. no, I don't want to hear that I'm just kidding no 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 no. I wrote it in a month that was the the first draft Mm -hmm. so I got it all out and then you know it took months to edit it the editing is the worst part for me I I have fun getting the first draft out of my head and down but the editing oh man yeah there was a lot of editing to do right right and somebody once said to me a book is um, one percent, ten percent writing and ninety percent rewriting or something, and I was like, "Great, that's yeah. that's yeah. Uh, it's about true, though, right? Don't you think?" Um, yeah, for sure. Okay, so your protagonist, Madeline Barton, is also a writer. Um, she's a journalist, mm-hmm. um, to be specific, and not necessarily an investigator. So, mm-hmm. um, what were the challenges do you think of having I don't know what your first book if your first book had an, a you know sort of proper investigator but um Mad- Madeline has to learn a, some things about sort of the investigation world and she doesn't have mm-hmm. a, a willing participant her, the the local uh law enforcement is not interested in helping her so what were the challenges mm-hmm. um for her to do to learn how to be an investigator well I think with with any kind of whodunit you got to have an investigator of some sort or a police officer or some something to carry along the investigation and the story so you're right. trying to figure out who done it and for me I didn't want to just do like a police procedural I wanted to do something that felt a little more personal so the aspect that Allegra and Madeline had met and had some 
some things that kind of bonded them together in the past. Um, kind of made it feel a little more personal than just your typical police procedural. And so that was important to me. I wanted to have, you know, a really deep dive into Allegra's life. And, you know, even though she's not technically the main character, she is a main character, even though all of her stuff is in the past. So, you know, from the get go that she's not going to be around, (laughs) but it's, it's important to have that connection with her. So I wanted to have Madeline you know, really be the one to lead us toward what really happened. And you're right. I mean, that Madeline really, she really looked up to, um, to Allegra. So that was, a yeah, um, there was a, she she really respected her and, and they did Mm -hmm. have sort of a a personal connection. So that is a very, that's a a really fair point. And I agree with you that making that personal connection super important. So, uh, okay. So let's go and talk about the source. Cause one of the things, you know, I, one of the things that there's, it's an, it's a, this kind of plot device can, can is in your case worked out really well, but can feel kind of contrived, right? We're like, all of a sudden we're getting these like wonderful, like little tidbits from, um, from a, a an anonymous source who seems to sort of be on the inside of the, of the case. Um, mm-hmm. And I want to know, like, and I don't know how we can talk, even talk about it. Um, but I guess I would like to sort of was that, did that come to you sort of in a, I mean, it was a dream. So in the dream, or did you have to sort of figure out how this information, you know, how she would be led through this case? Or did you know that really from the beginning? Like this is, this is what's going to happen is that she's going to receive information from the source. Yeah, I knew that from the beginning. That was in the dream. So I didn't really have much to think about there. <laughs> That's, I want to have your dreams. Um, okay, I know, so- I tried to do it for my next book and it didn't work out. So I had to actually work on it. <laughs> God, I tell you, that's, yeah, well, and, and I think that idea that it was so cinemagraphic probably also made it even that much more interesting to write, so, uh, so tell Mm -hmm. us about sort of what, you know, you're obviously, you mentioned Hitchcock, um, I think, uh, a few times, um, you know, in your, in the things that you sort of love, so tell, are there Mm -hmm. specific Hitchcock books, um, that, that inspired you, are there other authors you found, you find inspiring? Oh gosh, there's so many. Um, as far as other authors, um, Kimberly Bell, love her. And yes. she actually um, read an early version and was helping me, you know, edit some things and gave some suggestions. And she actually suggested that um, Madeline and Allegra meet in the beginning and find out that they share a birthday and that that kind of bonds them. And they have this moment where, you know, they kind of connect. So um definitely her and I love every single one of her books they're just all amazing they never they never fail to drop she's wonderful yeah she's wonderful yes and um Ruth Ware Mm -hmm. Riley Sager Sager I never know how to pronounce yeah Sager right and um the seven and a half deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle is my absolute favorite book ever so that um, was a wonderful book I agree that you have to be committed and study it a little bit but yeah you know it's just it's mind-blowing so uh, did I, you I, read I really his, love that did you read his next one I haven't yet no it's really it's also really really good really yeah. the next one's really good too I, I listened like- to the next one I like one that's a little bit difficult you have to think about. <laughs> yes. Well, I think that's true. I think you've accomplished that as well. I mean, there is there is a moment in this book where I, I, you, you as a reader, you are like, put on the brakes and like, mm-hmm. you have to stop and think about sort of like the world right. that you've been in. And that's, um, and the clues are there. So that's actually, they that's, are. When you, mm-hmm. that's when you feel like, you know, if the clues are there, you're like, what is going on? But when the clues are there, you're like, oh, wow. Yeah, yep. I've had yep. a lot of people say they, they went back and read, kind of flipped through and were like, oh. Absolutely. Like, yeah. yeah. So, no, it's totally fair. That's all okay. I can say. I know. <laughs> but, it's it's one of those. But Vertigo was definitely an influence in, in this book. That's, it's my uh-huh. favorite Hitchcock film, and I love it. It's flawless, and, you know, I had to throw in some nods to it in there. <laughs> Yep, I picked up on those for sure. Um, Love it. So I wish there's more. I, it's so funny. It's one of those books where we we can only talk about it to a very sort of I know specific point, <laughs> and then we can't talk about it anymore. Um, and I don't want to. Yeah. 
So I don't want to. <laughs> it's so it's a tough one to talk about. It is. Sure. It is a tough one. Re- it's really like there's three twists in it. There's the big yeah. one, and then there's two other ones. So it's. But we really can't hard. talk about. Yeah, we can't talk about any of them. We really nope. we can't <laughs> you talk about to, any of them. You just have to get in there and read it. You just have to trust us, right? Exactly. Right. So, okay. So, um, and it is, it's a, what a wonderful story. And um, congratulations on getting it out there in the world. And it's out right now. So it's mm-hmm. available to be snapped up. Um, mm-hmm. So tell us, Audra, what is next? What are you working on right now? When might we see it? I have a book called Counterplay that's coming out hopefully in 2023 so um I have a two book deal with my current publisher so they're going to put it out in about a year um uh, and then I have another one that I wrote that I wrote and it's called um Hush Dear Sister and then mm-hmm. I have another one that I've kind of plotted out in my head that's wow. called good, good people and then I have another one oh wow in my in my head that I've kind of plotted out on my phone and um I honestly can't remember what I ended up naming it but well, I just, tell us. I, I can't stop. Got, <laughs> I love it. That's what we just want. They always want the next book. So, t- can you give us a little um, taste or sort of idea about what Counterplay? That sounds like the next book that'll be out. with that right. what that one's about? Um, I call that one um, a mix of You, Gone Girl, and Dear Wife. So it's a little okay. darker. Yeah. A little bit more sinister than One okay. Little War, but still the same mind-blowing twists (laughs) I love it I love it the characters are just a little darker yes well I know that's we are I uh you know we love dark I think that's what Mm -hmm. many of us to gravitate towards that for whatever reason we don't need to you know we don't need to dig to it too deeply into I'm sure I think when times are tough and you know obviously the last couple years have been tough on for everyone you either go to a fluff book to make yourself feel better or you go to a dark book to be like well at least I'm not going through this right (laughs) and that's that's, where I go I go both (laughs) I I tend to go back and forth I like to watch fluff television you know um but I do I do love a dark book so I'll 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 watch I Love Lucy and then go read a dark thriller. So. Yes, there you go. No, that doesn't seem weird to me at all. Um, okay, well, tell readers um, where where they can find you, um, you know, your website, and then also where are your favorite social media places, um, and then we'll we'll leave them to go find your book. Um, I'm pretty much on all the social media. Okay. Um, I don't do Snapchat. That's a bit. That's about it. So um, I'm on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, um, all okay, the and I, thing. Under at Audra. It's a little bit different for each yes. one. Most of the time I do get Audra McAlee because it's such a, a unique name. Yes. <laughs> but if is. you go to if you go to my Instagram and click the link in my bio, it'll it'll link you everywhere. Or if you go to audramcalier.com. Um, I have links all to there. all my social. And I'm going to, I'm going to spell it. It's on everything we're seeing, but just because right. some people might be listening, it's Audra is A-U-D-R-A and McElyay is M-C-E-L-Y-E-A. Cause it's, I had to go through the, how do we spell, how do I say this out loud and not mess it up? <laughs> it's a beautiful name. Is it Scottish? It's Scotch Irish, yeah. Scotch Irish, okay. Well, that's gorgeous. So, well, everybody, thank you so much for joining us today. You got to meet Audra McElyay and hear a little bit, only a little bit about one little word because we couldn't destroy the incredible twist for you. So, go pick that up now and keep your eyes posted for Audra's next book. Thank you so much for joining us today on Killer Women, a part of the Authors on the Air Global Network, and we will see you next time. Bye.